of faith would he accept and what percentage would he list? Allahu Alam. Of course, we know that. That's an easy answer. Um, uh, only a revelation would clarify that problem. But I'm asking you. Estimation. The best way to analyze it is look at your own self. Don't look at the community at large. Just look at your own self and say, would Muhammad be happy to call me part of his ummah? The way I am. That's all. You don't need to look at everybody else. And when we do that, Sheikh Hizub al-Qaradawi wrote a, a recent, uh, an old book, but I read it recently again, where he identifies the Muslim community's problem with two words, thought crisis. He says the problem of the Ummah today is thought crisis. We don't know how to think. We don't know how to think properly, appropriately. We don't know how to think in the right way at the right time. We lost the... Capacity to think. And that, I believe, has a knock-on effect. So the wider Muslim context in Britain, mine would be perhaps slightly uh, a lot of mixed sort of experiences from different backgrounds. So Amr Naeem's work that he's talked about from Penny Appeal, some of them I, I am on the stage doing it for them, alhamdulillah, very proudly. Um, work on, at the grassroots that you've talked about, uh, forced marriages that you, you, you highlighted. Um, believe it or not, I have, was a victim of a forced marriage when I was 18. I wrote extensively about it. Um, I know men don't necessarily have that experience or don't talk about it, but I have spoken about it. Um, mosques are being built left, right, left, right and centre in every part of this country every day almost. On a weekly basis I get invited to come and help fundraise for a mosque. I don't say no, because it's an initiative that we should support. But those mosques, do they have the capacity to deliver Islam to the local community or the wider community? I doubt it. The reason why I say yes is because if I don't, somebody else will. Or on the day of judgment, Allah will say, the least you could have done is help to build the mosque and then help build people. So that leads me to um, building people, is what ISP should be doing. We should be building people. That should be our motto every day of our life. Other organizations are building masajids, alhamdulillah. Other organizations are running charities, brilliant. We support them. But we build people. And initially when ISP came into being, in this very room, my brothers and sisters, I made a promise. In this very hall, just there on that corner of this stage. I will never forget it. When Ustad Khuram Murad grabbed my hair, I think I had long hair at that time too, and he shook it, and he said, you're making it difficult for me, Masroor. My heart is already physically hurting. By you saying what you're saying, you're making it difficult for me. And I made a promise to him that I will do all my best to remain loyal to the mission and the vision that he had outlined. And that is a simple mission and a vision that he gave me, or to all of us. To deliver Islam to the people. To deliver, balligh, go and deliver. The hadith of Prophet um, So I think we, as an organization, should be focusing on building people up and down the country. People who are inspired to live the the, the, the methodology of wasatiyah, the moderate, the middle ground. <coughs> Some people have an allergic reaction to the word moderation uh, nowadays. So I'll not use the word moderation, I'll use the word Quran uses, wasatiyah, which is the balanced middle ground. Center ground, a yeah, more politically correct term. <coughs> balanced like wasatiyah. We should be building people like that. People who think balanced, who can think. And I find this extremely difficult to confess. Wherever I go, people still fail to think adequately. I do a lot of mosques activities as <laughs> I do Friday prayers in many masajids and I know what people do and what kind of questions they ask. Is it still okay, brother, for me to pray? I made wudu, but I didn't wash my uh, hair properly or wash your hair properly, what? 
don't even need to wash your hands. I get people asking all sorts of very basic primary school questions still. If we, uh, uh, Amr Naim is so right when he said, when he talked about <coughs> religious literacy. Our, our primary motto should be to build people so that they have the religious literacy that they need, they have the confidence that they need to be good, confident Muslim, and they should be very proud of being British. This is their local identity. So what would Prophet Sallallahu do? I said to you in the beginning, what would he do first? He would call the community around him and say, Ya all my people, eh? Ya Qawmi, all my people. That's what he would do. He would diffuse the tension. He would take away us and them debate and discussions. He would take away the foreigner and the alien or the enemy from within concept completely out of the conversation. He would address them as all my people, Ya Qawmi, all my people. That's what he would do. So anyway, um, I, I believe we have a long way to go and I can go on and on about it. But my immediate thoughts are, that up and down the country, there is a thought crisis, and I especially focus on uh, uh, building people to address this thought crisis that is engulfing us in our community. Thank you. Zakum uh, Brother Ajmal. Just a few thoughts that Brother Ajmal shared. You know, um, we have a thought crisis. ISP should really be focusing on building people, and those people should be balanced people. And we should answer the basic questions that people still have and the religious illiteracy that's out there should be addressed by the ISB as well to, to help us become stronger as a community, inshallah. So we'll have uh, Dr. Hani uh, Urbana for our next speaker who's um, not sure <laughs> what the doctor's doing. <laughs> We have waited for you for so long. That's okay. <laughs> if anyone is allowed, you are. So we uh, see Dr. Hani as our Murabi, our guide, our teacher, our advisor, and it's in that light that we, okay, we've uh, asked Dr. Hani to come in to give us a few words of advice and inshallah thereby inspire us to see what we should do, what we should focus on moving forward. And as you yes, know, Dr. Hani's um, vast experience all, right, all, all right. from Islamic Relief to, to now has been uh, amazing, mashallah. Alhamdulillah. No microphone either? I'll, I'll take it, I'll take it. Uh, because I don't have resources, I have to make my own resources. I do have a brain, and you have to let the brain click with you. All right, give me the microphone. You can put it uh, this way, this way, this way. See? All right. Yeah, so bad at it. Queen, where's the queen? Your husband is uh, useless. Is uh, struggling. Okay. Uh, very good, very good. Now, Alhamdulillah, I was shocked to see you because I was told that I'm coming to see young Muslims, and you are all young Muslims. You are all young Muslims. Okay, this was my first shock. <laughs> because this gentleman, the king, turned me young Muslim. Okay, this is number one. Number two, thought crisis. That's why I took off my shoes to become a free thinker. Because sometimes your shoes restrict your ability to think. And if you are not thinking properly, you will sink. And let your sight you sink with you. The second one was S, the first one was TH. What I'm going to talk about today, because of my old, my existing relation with young Muslim and with young ISB leaders, 
Are we going to be an elite club? It's your choice. It's your absolute choice. If you become an elite club, become a defeat blub. You know the blub? The people who blub? The blubbing people? My English is not as good as you are. Because I am foreigner. You are not. I failed in my MD because of my English was so bad to a point that one of the examiners said that this donkey, seriously, I read, I read my, uh, my report. But because of my subject, the scientific one, I passed, I passed, I passed. And you can go and read my thesis in Birmingham Medical School, 1991. Blub. I'm going to ask you some questions because I'm not going to go to give a talk. And which one you want to be as an organization? You want to be like a lake, swamp, river, sea, ocean, spring water, deep water. What do you want to be? Entirely up to you people. My struggle and my challenge is most of the Muslim organization are becoming swamps. Even not a lake anymore. Because they love the idea, they strangled it. And they make it infested with parasites because they don't leave it to somebody else to own it. Your idea does not belong to you. Your dream does not belong, belong to you. The organization you organize and you build does not belong to you. No belong to whom? To the community. We have been brought up wrongly. Wrongly, wrongly. By people who mismanaged organizations. By people who love themselves more than loving the community. <coughs> Seriously. It's entirely up to you to become a river, ocean, sea, or a swamp. You have to produce leadership. You can't afford not to let your son and daughter to become a leader. Why avoid my children in the community of becoming leaders? By you sitting in an organization for 30 and 40 years and you are out of touch. You don't know the culture of the community, you don't know the culture of the society, you don't even know the language, like me. My language is not very well spoken, like you. Challenge. And this is coming to each one of us. It is the nafs. It is the ego. It is the logo. It is the status. It is the killer. Don't look at an organization, look at ourselves. Can you leave your position? For some young people to do, and they make mistakes? Can you encourage people to make mistakes without hammering them, without cursing them, without fooling them? Or you and me and us are Mr. Prophets? Don't make any mistakes. Big challenge on the personal level. Entirely up to you what do you want to be. Talks is not good. Waste of time. Maulana Edi, you know Edi? Edi? He was qualified from Cambridge with two masters and four PhDs. Is that right? He was a man of action. And he detested any stage managed talks. No education, but he was not ignorant. He could not be able maybe to read and write, but he has the heart to save community, to drive community, to build community, and to leave, her, to leave legacy while he is alive and died after his death. Why don't you be like him? You are in Britain. What else do you need? You are not poor. What else do you need? You are not non-educated. What else do you need? You need the heart. You need the mind. You need to connect between the, hind, the heart and the mind and the community. 
in the middle, the connection between the heart and mind is the community. Not our personal ego, not our organizational ego, not about jamaat ego, not about anything. It's about community. If we talk about the Prophet Sallallahu he was dreaming for humanity. To save humanity. Not to save Quraysh. Not to save Bani Hashim. Humanity. Your mission is for humanity. Not for ISB. ISB is just a tool. Just a tool. To get you to heaven. If you use it properly. Masrur was talking about leadership. There was a generation gap between you, who used to be a, a young Muslim, you and Nadim and Ibrahim and Mahmouda and uh, all the people here in the room. It was cut off. Like you cut the umbilical cord of the growth of the leadership that you wanted to have. And this is because of what? Because of the ego. But we were suffering for the last 10, 15, 20 years because we could not be able to raise young leadership. Seriously, you want to have a challenge? Challenge yourself first. Ask yourself first because you ask the ignorant imam. Because you ask, the, there's no scholarity. There's no scholarity. Let me to be very nice. There is uh, no much scholarity in UK. Those people you brought from different parts of the world do not know anything. They read. They cannot comprehend. Big difference between reading and comprehension. Comprehending. Digesting. Analyzing. Then producing opinions. Then responding to the community needs. Please. You get the wrong imams. You get the wrong muftis. Wrong scholars. And they've been brought up wrongly. Let me talk about uh, some of the terminology. So is the decision is yours, brothers and sisters, between the swamp and the ocean. Which one you want to be? This is your answer. You want to get the Nobel Peace Prize? You can get it if you want, because you have the ability to become the one who can win it and say, it's not much for me. I need better thing than this. Because I was preparing it for young people, and you are the youngest. <laughs> for me, you have to go from nowhere to everywhere. From nothing to do most of things. And this is a challenge. I came as a foreigner. You have been born here. You don't have excuses of not understanding the culture, of not understanding the language, not understanding the history, of not, not, not. I have the excuse. And people at my age have some excuse. But now I don't have excuse. But believe me, your question and stand before Allah will be more difficult. More difficult. But you know what? Because we wanted to be elite club. So what? Beat it out. I don't want you. The community, the community does not want elite clubs. Does not want people who do not connect, communicate, and help. 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 If you can, you want to accumulate people around you, isn't it? You'd love to become a huge membership organization. Is that right? But you have to accommodate. Accumulation is accommodation. Accommodate me. I'm a strong head woman who does not want to wear hijab. And I want to be a member of your club. No, 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 no. She is shaitan. You are weak. You are converting the converted. You want only to be with the converted. Easy 
cozy, busy. But you do not want to manage the strong heads who can make that change. And if they leave you, they behave very wild outside. Is that right? And I've got many examples. Not because they are bad, but because we are bad managers. If you want to accumulate, huh? accommodate them. Accommodate, give them a space. You have to anticipate everything. But once you anticipate, you participate. Oh, it's coming. So, what are you going to do then? So, we get the heat. Now I'm sweating. You have to participate. For years, somebody like me was attending UN meetings without being, understanding what they are talking about. Just listening, just listening to understand. Then after a few years, three, four, five, we started to speak. Then after 30 years, not only one organization, but many organizations started to change the humanitarian climate by introducing new leadership. It takes years, it took us years and years and years to build it. It's not a weekend job. It's a mission, it's a vision, it's a message. Are you the people of the, uh, of, the, of the message? Do you have a message to deliver? This is the question. What's your message for the community? You gave me a speech, you gave me a reminder, so what? What's your message? What's your message of change? Who will make the change and create the leadership and save the country and build the humanity? and build a community and save humanity. What kind of message do you want to give? Don't tell me as a scholar, is, we need a scholar. Why do you need a scholar? Why don't you work on yourself? Why don't you work on your children? Why do you, own, why do you always want to depend on somebody else? Well, you can do it, and we have the resources to do it. We have the resources to do it. But we don't use our resources right. <sighs> if you debate, you have to integrate. I'm trying to be 16 years old now. 15 or 16, me? 14. 13. Debate to integrate. Both. Very good. See, I'm trying to learn the English language at my young age. Mm. Can you give me some chocolate? <laughs> the last one, no, I keep it. Keep it for daddy. Daddy is sitting here. Here's my father. Daddy, take it, please. I want to die. Mahmouda, Mahmouda. Your husband is. Uh, your husband or husband. Your husband. <laughs> ah! Your husband is daddy. <laughs> anyway. If we debate anything, we have to be a part of the people who can make the proper integration. Put your view on the table. If you create the debate, don't leave it. Lead it. Don't leave, lead. This is our mission as individuals, not as organizations. Being, now I'm going down to the 13 years old. Okay. okay. Elect to elevate. To elevate what? The community. The community. Our focus should be on the community. Our focus should be on our country. Our focus should be on our society. If we protect society, community, we protect our family. Protection comes from the greater protection. Protection comes from the intention of why to be protected. We have to elevate people. We have to keep elevating people 
after keeping producing a stronger community which everyone will respect. Now I'm 11. <laughs> Articulate to translate. When you know the language, you have to translate your language to the lowest grassroots individual who does not understand English. Not good enough to speak Shakespearean language or Cambridgean language or theological language. It's good for you. Most of the speeches or the reminder in the mosque, this Jum'ah and others, the children don't understand it. The children does not, do not understand it. And we think that we are delivering speech because we are affected by it, but it's not affecting anybody else. Translate your language, if you can articulate it, to the lowest level. And there are different terminology and languages with different speciality. And this is when I work on myself as a leader before I am trying to create new leadership. <sighs> Who are we then? This is a big question. You have to decide. Who are we? If we are looking at a young, growing community, what is the representation of youth in your leadership? You know how many million young people in Pakistan? 107, 108. If they are the most important part of the resources of Pakistan, same like here, same like everywhere else, but are they a part of the decision maker? Or we are, we are only the people who understand to lead. Then we decide for them. How much is the representation of women in our leadership decision makers? Whether we like them in their opinion or not, whether we like the youth opinion or not, you have to accommodate. If you want to accommodate all those people, you have to, you have to give them a space to think with you, a space to produce. I was in Turkey, uh, when was that? Two weeks ago. You know what we're discussing? with the young people, because I changed my talk from a talk to interaction. What do you call it? Atheism. The rise of atheism. Amongst young people, are we addressing it? In certain Muslim countries, there's incest happening. And one of my, one of my closest uh, friends, 15 years ago, so no, 17 years ago, in a very, very conservative area, I'm not going to mention the name of the country. He was making the abortion as a gynecologist. We're not living in our community. We're living on a cuckoo island where the cuckoo bird is not there anymore. <laughs> it gone somewhere else. If I am a cuckoo bird, I go somewhere else. But you still insist to go to live in, on the cuckoo island. A cuckoo island. Where is the cuckoo? You have the cuckoo? <laughs> All right. If you want to have a solid organization, have representation of the community. Women, young, I mean young, at least 25 to 30%. Don't tell me anything else. When, when Muhammad al-Fatih was 16 or was 14, when he was made the, 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 he was made the, the, the prince of one of the, uh, what do you call it, the governor of one area, when uh, Zayd ibn Thabit, oh, Zayd ibn Zayd, Osama ibn Zayd, Osama ibn Zayd, no. who, who was a leader at the age of 16 or 17? When Abdullah ibn Abbas started to learn the, the, the knowledge of Islam at the age of three, then he became the muhaddith and the faqih at the age of 14, 15. And the great scholars, the great sahaba were listening to him in Medina at the age of what? 14, 15. And now we're, you're denying, you're denying the younger generation from being a part of the decision maker because they don't have the vision, they don't have the drive, they don't have the knowledge. What do you have? They have different vision, different drive, different ability. And with, with a world of social media, anybody can pick them up from these telephones. Yes, engage them. 
before they'll be engaged by somebody else. What's our culture? I'm just trying to finish because the time, Brother uh, Nadim. Uh, what's our culture? Very good, as as uh, I'm. Uh, I, sorry, I did not hear your vo your speech, but I believe in what you said. How much is the check you give to me? <laughs> uh, Zizu, take it from him. Zizu is Zahid behind you. You signed the check and give it to Zizu. And where is uh, Fifo? Fifo. Fufu, Fifo. <laughs> He's running away, huh? <laughs> yeah, we've got Zizu and Fifo, huh? Farouk is Fifo and Zahid is Zizu. Okay. Volunteerism should be a part of the life of our children. It must become a duty. It must become a duty because it's the first step, Brother Masur, of having these young leaders. Engage them in any voluntary activity. Any voluntary activity. Whether humanitarian, social, or whatever it is. Because you would like to have future generation specializing in all the different aspects of the specialities in this community. For the life of the people here, politicians, economists, uh, doctors, engineers, farm, whatever you call it. Whatever you call it. So coming back to conclude, if you want to build the organization, see what do you want to do. You want to get married? Is your wife here? No, no, not you. Not but um, is your wife is not here? No. Alhamdulillah. You want to get married? No. <laughs> no, no, uh, I, I am very happy with my wife because she's the one behind me. Without her, I am nothing. Seriously. She brought my children and she brought me with the children because I'm a very difficult child, very demanding child. Where's the food? Why didn't you wash my clothes? Everything is there. And she is telling me, I will look after you. Without her, as I said, I'm nothing. Inshallah. That's why the role of woman in the family, the role of woman in the community, the role of woman in the society, this is something we have to bring Islam back to it. We're not doing Islamic judgment, justice, not judgment, to her. Getting people to teach me woman's right. Ay, 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 ay. It's very painful. When the Prophet came and liberated the woman from what she was suffering from, the bad treatment of all the different civilizations, now they are tarnishing us by saying, Ah, you people cannot treat woman. Oh my God. Can't swallow it. It's an absolute defeat to the message of the Prophet. So coming back to, to the big ask, it's us as individuals, it's not the community. It's us because individuals make community. It's us who needs the Prophet to look at us with pride and say, this is my Ummah. It's us who let the angel to be very happy with us. It's us who let Allah to shower all his blessing on every and each one of us. It's us, not anybody else. It's a person. It's a, it's a personal responsibility. Not a sheikh or imam or alim will get us to heaven. It's my Work. It's your work in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's my sincerity. It's our sincerity in the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't throw the responsibility and put it on the shoulder of anybody else. It's me who failed my children. It's me who failed my community. It's me who failed my society, my country, my humanity. It's me who failed the Prophet.
and do let him not to be able to identify us as Muslims. It's me. The judgment should be on me before I start to talk about you. If I'm a good, people might be good like me. If I'm bad, people will take the excuse to be bad like me. And the final answer is build strong organization and make it vibrant by the diversity, the, the, the composition of the organization itself. Include, but accommodate everybody in your organization. Jazakallah khair, Brother Nadim. A lot of thoughts are coming from my shoes, my foot. You, can you see my socks? Huh? You see, you see the thoughts coming out? He's looking for them. Where, where's the man? Come on, uh, Misu. Come on, you, you make a man in front of me, I know who you were. <laughs> or we used to play together. <laughs> Look at my socks. <laughs> very, very nice. No, no, I'm talking about the thoughts coming from the socks. That's what I'm saying, they're very nice. Can you see, talk about any one of them? Can I smell them or can I think? Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. I just had a shower and I had a few socks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. Jazakallah khair. May Allah bless you, inshallah. Thank you very much.